I wish, you know, it was easier to uh, to have informal moments and sort of get in front of these guys and let them get to know us as people. Pride. Gonna get crunk. Yeah. Yeah. Head back to Longview, Kelly popping trunk. Yeah. I ain't even tripping. Yeah. Riding and I'm sipping. Yeah. Yeah. Let me come through four foes that are tipping. Yeah. 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 Let me yeah. Yeah. Watch the trunk crack. Yeah. Yeah. Let me sit sideways, see me running back. Yeah. 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 Maybe AP, yeah. Yeah. maybe AD. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't even tripping cause we some athletes. Yeah. Messing with Smitty yeah. in the summertime. Yeah. He get pissed if we don't make our time. Yeah. But we gon' get it cause we gotta finish. Yeah. Nebraska horn hustles, man, we diminish. Yeah. Yeah. A little. Yeah. Paint like a skittle. Yeah. I ain't even tripping. I ain't never double dribble. Yeah. Cause I'm a player from the Himalaya. Yeah. Let me sit sideways, man. Maybe back door. Yeah. Maybe fall off. Yeah. Sipping codeine cause I gotta kill yeah. a cow. Yeah. Let me sit sideways in the big bins. Oh, yeah. you boys, they my brothers, they my friends. All right, welcome to Fullback U. Another uh, excited about this episode. Three guys who don't get enough credit, kind of like me at Fullback. Uh, let me introduce <laughs> him, uh, my buddy Jason Kersey. Jason, how you doing? Doing good. You know, I never knew what JD stood for until I saw your diploma there. Thank you. I, 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 you know, it's one of those things you never think about what someone who goes by their initials name is, and I didn't know that you were James Douglas Reynolds. My son's the third, and I'm glad you could learn that way, Jason, because yeah. it beats the alternative of not having it. So, thank <laughs> you. Uh, Ryan, my buddy Ryan Aber. Ryan, how are you doing? Doing great. Good to be here with you, JD, and, and uh, two good friends in the media with Jason and uh, the guy you're going to introduce next. Absolutely. Face, everybody knows Nate Fakin. How are you, sir? I'm good. Happy to be here. Cool to check out the room finally and get a feel for it and feel like I'm among greatness. Oh, man. I, I feel the same way. You know, you guys have, have each individually helped me, and I, I really, really appreciate that, and we're going to get into all that. Jason, if you don't mind, you know, you covered Oklahoma for a long time. You went to cover Arkansas. Tell everybody uh, how yeah. the athletics going for you. Yeah, no, it's it's going great. I worked at the Oklahoma for a long time with with this guy. Uh, we were partners for a long time uh, on high, covering high schools and OU. And Thank yeah, God I, that's over. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I take offense. I loved you guys, man. I loved having you guys at the game. And uh, and then yeah, I, I covered Arkansas for a while. Covered the whole SEC for one year. And yeah, now I'm back at, uh, for for the athletic here covering OU again. Uh, this will be my second season back. And so yeah, it's going great. Ryan doing great work at the Oklahoma. How's that treating you? It's going well. I've, uh, you know, I grew up reading this paper. I grew up reading guys like Barry Trammell and, and John Rohde and, and guys like that and uh, was glad to be able to come back home in 2006 and uh, been great covering Oklahoma for, gosh, what, seven years now? Just about. Your first year with me was my first year was twelve and you joined me in thirteen. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. So twenty thirteen. Been a while. Yeah. And Nate Channel Four, uh, how's everything going there, KF4? Good. Just keeping busy. This is like our one slow time of the, like our whole calendar year. So soaking <laughs> that in and looking forward to a little vacation before football season and um, I think NBA free agencies this weekend, so looking forward to the Woj bombs, but uh just just hanging. I think this will be my I think I came about the same time your timeline would have been. This would be my seventh year K4 coming up at the end of July. So huh? getting old. No, Comes you're back not. Quick. It doesn't look like it. But what do you, <laughs> what do you guys tell it? You know, how, how'd you get into media, Jason? Just let me know that. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I mean, I, like Ryan, I grew up reading the Oklahoma and I grew up in Noble and uh, my parents got the Oklahoma and my grandparents got the Oklahoma. And so I, I, you know, also grew up reading Barry and Rhodey and Jenny Carlson and all of them. And um, and yeah, and then I sort of decided I loved sports and wanted to be part of them. I was not good enough to play them uh, in college or professionally, clearly. Um, I barely was. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but hey, you made it. You still got those yeah, jerseys right, hanging right, up and yeah, everything. Right. Else. Saying, and you got the memorable video clip. So. You're right. You're right. right. We'll, we'll, we'll show that one later. My son can't let it go. Please no. Anyway. Well, yeah, we, we do need to talk about that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I went my freshman year of college to East Central down in Ada. I uh, started working at the student paper there. I recently found, stumbled across my first published articles, and they're That's terrible. Awesome. Um, and then I transferred to OU and got very lucky, got on part-time at the Oklahoma and doing um, very menial tasks, uh, typing in scores and answering the phone. And I did that for a few years. I designed pages for a few years, covered high schools. And then I covered OU, and kind of the rest is history. So that's that's kind of my my path. Fantastic, man! Stuff you would never know. I, I would never know. But Ryan, uh, if you don't mind, just tell everybody how you got into it. Yeah, I I was uh, 
I think 14 years old, first journalism class I'd ever taken was at uh, Hefner Middle School or Hefner Junior High at the time, uh, the, the Vikings. And the last time Shout I played out. football, by the way, was uh, as a freshman there nice. at Hefner, wore the, uh, the horns on the helmet. One of the, I, think, I thought it was the coolest helmet uh, around at that time, certainly in uh, junior high. But I took that journalism class and very quickly realized that this was something I wanted to do uh, for the long term. My teacher said I was all right at it. And really, since then, there's never been any doubt of what I wanted to do with my life. Started in Muskogee. I just walked in there and said, hey, you need, me, you need anybody to cover any high school games? First game I covered was uh, Stigler Ufala nice. with a guy named Avery Shine at running back in 1999. I don't know if anybody Amazing player. That. Signed with I OU. Signed with coming. OU. <laughs> yeah, he, he did. And he was a heck of a high school player. Uh, didn't quite work out for him. But uh, was was really memorable, and then just sort of went from there. Wound up in Arkansas, had a couple different stops in Fort Smith, and then in Fayetteville, Springdale, and then got the, the chance to come back home in 2006. Nate, that was an awesome story. Uh, Nate, uh, if you don't mind, just telling everybody how you got in the game. I am the opposite of these guys. I grew up like didn't like school, was a slacker. Um, at one point, I wanted to be an orthodontist because I, I had braces, so my Orthodontist. Yeah, because people who are not like in school and are slackers. Right, exactly. But I, I figured I could lock it in at some point. Think. <laughs> exactly. I figured I could lock it in. And, like, dude worked four days a week, makes both loads of money. I'm like, this is what I want to do. Right. I don't yeah. want to work. And Luke looked like he loved life. Anyways, get to college, start taking science class. I'm like, I, I can't do this. <laughs> you got to have all A's, and I'm barely getting a B. And sometimes a C or even maybe even a D. Sure, sure. And uh, so literally one of my roommates said, hey, you like sports. You should write for the paper. And I'm like, well, I'm not that good of a writer. Um, or at least not, like, to the level that y'all do. And so I literally just one day, when you, when you apply for classes, search sports. And um, Sports Pad was like the TV show we were all part of. Got into that, got into it. I'm like, hey, I like this. Went with it, took Al's class. Oh. I'm sure you all probably did. <laughs> yeah, I awesome. never did. I, I, really yeah, did. I, I never, it. never uh, it, it did. Cool I had class. a weird college experience that <laughs> took me to three different places sure. in the military before I wound up uh, graduating. But, uh, yeah, never took Al's class. Yeah. It, it was cool, though. I, I liked it, and that got me connected with Bob Beard Jr., Intern with him. He liked me a lot. He actually tried to hire me. I was telling Dylan this. I said, twice while I was still in college to like come work for him in college but credit to him he wouldn't let me uh go without graduating first which i'm glad he did i, I essentially talked my way into graduating somehow um and then <laughs> i um got my first job off in west virginia for like five months then junior called me like i was supposed to work in lawton and um kswo down there and was headed back for that and he called me like the night my second to last night hey you want to come work for me Came back and worked for him, of course. Who didn't want to cover OU, OSU, right. Thunder? Um, and work with him. Yeah, and work for a legend. And um, so I've been at K4 all this time now, and I'm really glad my roommate randomly suggested that one day. <laughs> and uh, kind of like they're saying, I feel super blessed to have the job I have. I get paid to go to ball games and talk to people. I, you know, if I was eight year old me, I'd never would have imagined. Yeah. getting to talk to yeah. um so it's 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 a cool career and i love it well rest in peace bbj well i'm gonna ha i added him to my list we're gonna have to tell stories about that and uh, you know I've, <laughs> i i also got to credit you guys i mean you guys you sacrifice a lot and and a lot of it was for kids that i know and uh you know i know i appreciate it and they do jason you, you cover the team tell me about the current state uh, your opinion of, of ou football oh man well i mean it's there's only a few things that could be better, really, at this point. I mean, the offense is great. The uh, quarterbacks keep winning Heisman's and being drafted number one. Jalen Hurts is certainly going to probably be pretty good, I would imagine, uh, next year. Um, and they're winning the Big 12. I really think the only thing left to do, kind of, is, is to get over the hump and win the national championship. The, it's kind of shocking, really, that OU has gone almost two decades without winning the national championship. It's actually now been longer. <laughs> between the last one and now than it was between Switzer's last one and Stoops' only one. Right. Which is so, crazy because that seems like a, such a big uh, gulf there. And yeah. I, I think part of it was because of the, the struggles of, uh, you know, the Howard Schnellenberger and John Blake era. Right. It probably felt longer. Yeah, it did feel because longer. Because you winning I conference and yeah. winning well, Heisman's. Like and, 50 years from now, if you looked at the current gap, you'd have 
no clue they were as successful <laughs> as they were. You'd think of it just now, they probably weren't any good. Or, right. Yeah. You know. so, so, yeah, I mean, it's I think that's, that's sort of uh, how I view it. I mean, they're obviously a top four or five program in the country, but um, – they just have to take that, get over that next hump. And there have been several points over the last several years when I thought they would do it and they come up short. And um, I, I, I thought they had a pretty good chance this last year until the first quarter happened and <laughs> in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the Orange Bowl. So, so yeah, um, I mean, I, I really – and now I think they, they really have a good defensive coordinator. I think Grinch uh, has a good shot to turn things around. They certainly have the talent, I would think, to at least be decent and really – and you guys may disagree with this. I think all they have to do is be decent, maybe even slightly below average on defense. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and, I think, and, and they could win it. That's yeah, I think that. with with the uh, offense that they have, and I don't know that they're going to be as productive this year as they have been the last three. Of course, every year the last three, I've said they're not going to be as productive on <laughs> offense this year, and they just keep getting better and better and better and better, uh, which is been just shocking the numbers that they put up the last few years but i i think if they can just be a top 50 defense uh, an adequate defense then they can be a team that can compete because of their offense to uh to win playoff games and and win national championships they don't have to be great they just have to be good enough and we've seen them be good at times outside of the league i mean you look at that ohio state game a few years ago and things like that Mm -hmm. um but they've got to get better consistently I think uh, we've seen some some progress, especially on defensive recruiting recently. The uh, Perion Winfrey uh, commitment was was big, um, so I, I think it's important to keep seeing progress on that side of the ball. Nate, current state of OU football, kind of like what these guys are saying. They've been so close, but haven't been able to get it done. They've been showing a bunch of replays of games on on Fox Sports recently, and a friend of mine was texting me about it, and I said, you know, it kind of came weird for us on Sundays. We have a 5 and a 10 show, and we'll try to do other storylines we don't cover on Saturday. Well, at the end of the year, it literally became one was dedicated to offense because they were incredible, like y'all were saying, and then one was on defense because they struggled. Yeah, and that was like the simplest way to break it down. Like there was no other way to look at it. So if you're able to kind of even the point out, and like they said, I think this is a point I said all year long last year, you only need like two out of three, a stop on two out of three possessions or (laughs) three out of four, or you get two or three in a row, that gives you enough – get you up two touchdowns because of the offense is so good and that's all you need sometimes. and if you just create some turnovers this this that's team it. was historically bad last year at creating turnovers if you create turnovers with this offense the way it is that's going to create a lot of points uh, on the scoreboard and, and take away chances from the other side and I think that's something that they really didn't have at all last year well I mean I think about this and this may drive people crazy I, I love to play what if though and so like <laughs> what if they'd had one one turnover in the Texas game w- the first Texas game oh sure okay if they have one turnover in Texas they probably win um, they're undefeated um, Get a are, are they ranked <laughs> number one or number two yeah um, maybe they play Notre Dame instead of Alabama in the first yeah. game. You know, maybe Those they get to the national yeah. championship Those game. Matter. I mean, all these things, and, and all it would have taken is, and, and now it's entirely possible they still would have been ranked fourth in the <laughs> in the final playoff standings. But you know, what if they weren't? What if they were ranked third and they played in the in the uh, Cotton Bowl instead? Yeah. So I mean, there's just a lot of what ifs, but that that's one that I think is interesting because you're on. Un- there's a difference between being undefeated and being not undefeated. Yeah, so. uh, uh, you're right. Good. A term they that Lincoln and all of them use a lot too is complimentary. Mm-hmm. I was saying complimentary football. I was telling my friend that too. That if the defense like made a stop, yep. you you kind of felt like oh the offense got to go get seven, and if they didn't, it's like boy you just you let one slip through the cracks, and that would happen a lot too, where yep. they wouldn't necessarily always help each other. Like you've have seen in the past, like your squad yeah, back in the day. I was just going to say that. Yeah, it, you, we were great about that. Um, unfortunately, Nate, what I think is the game shifted from front seven to back seven, and you you got to have elite DB play, and we didn't have anything close to that last year. I mean, in this conference, you've got to have guys that can single up, man up. I mean, you laugh, but you know it's true. I mean, you you got to be able to do those, and those are those turnovers that you're talking about, interceptions when guys do catch the ball, things like that, being able to press up and play coverage. But we could go on and on about that. <laughs> you you guys ha- had some expertise 
piece, and, and I think people could really, really learn about this. And you had the rare, you have the rare experience of you guys got to see Bob Stoops and Lincoln Riley. Um, if you can, Jay, just tell me similarities, differences. What was I have my own opinion of what uh, I saw you guys at the press conference and what it was like, but I want to hear from you what it was like under Bob and now Lincoln. Just as a reporter covering it, sure. Um, well, my. Uh, m- I, I think that one thing that was oft, is often misunderstood about the relationship, <clears throat> pardon me, between the media and Bob Stoops was that it was always really adversarial and really angry and really contentious. And it really wasn't, I don't think, quite like that. It could come off that way sometimes because Bob uh, is not... <laughs> He's he, not going to back know, down. King well, of the well, one word answer, well, too. It's not just that. It's <laughs> that, like, in the press conferences, he's not, go, he's going to answer the question and then he's going to move on. He's not going to expand on it much. He's yeah. not going to be. If you ask him a question, he's probably going to answer it, but he's only going to answer it. He's and not going to. Yeah, and he's go not going it. to seem super, like, happy to be doing it all the time and, um, and, and whatever. And, you know, there, there, there were a lot of moments where he would come off. Really, and you know the moments that kind of would go viral. The one that I Don't think put of is me with you. Yeah, John Hoover <laughs> and him. That's on YouTube. Oh the, yes, it is. After the OU Texas game, I mean, those kind of moments are the ones people remember. But but what I would say about Bob too is that a lot of times, if he was mad, he would let you know that he was mad. Um, I received, and Ryan probably remembers this four, five, six phone calls probably over the years from him when he was pissed off about something I'd written and it would typically go the same way. He'd be pissed. He'd cuss a little bit at me. He would, uh, you know, tell me what he thought. He would maybe, if he was in a really bad mood, threaten to not answer any more of my questions. He did that once or twice. Um, but then by the end, he was just like, okay, well, see you Monday. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and literally, that's how it went. And then he forget about it. It was yeah. just like he needed to get it off his chest, and it was fine. I When I left the beat the first time, when I went to Arkansas, I mean, I actually had a in-person conversation with Bob. I went to tell him I was leaving. It went very uh, well. He was very gracious. He said what I just said. He appreciated that I always took the phone calls when he was mad at me. Um, and uh, and we moved on. And uh, so I, I, yes, I got frustrated with him and his policies sometimes and his mood a little bit. But I, I, I don't think it was as bad as I think a lot of people think it was. And then with Lincoln, Lincoln, I think, is a little bit more um, uh, he, he seems a lot more open and he's he will expand on answers and he will talk a little bit more. I think sometimes he's also a little more restrictive with his policies, though, at times. So it's kind of interesting how, how that works. Not not that either one is better or worse. I've had good relationships with both of them. I, I don't really have a whole lot to complain about. Or Ryan, yeah. Bob Stoops versus Lincoln or compare and contrast? Yeah, I think a lot of the same stuff that Jason said. I think, uh, Bob, you knew what you were getting with Bob, that uh, it was always going to be the same. His policies didn't change much except for, you know, a couple times the, the, the Austin Kendall thing uh, comes to mind. I think we I knew wasn't there for that. We could get, uh, you know, you could talk to freshmen after they played for the first time. And like Jason said, if, if Bob ever had a problem with you, he'd let you know. And he'd be pissed about it, but then you know the, the next day everything would be cool. He treated everybody, you know, pretty even keel, except for a couple of exceptions. One of the ones just mentioned, um, which always seemed to irritate him a little bit. Lincoln is sort of the same all the time. I think Bob would would read the circumstances a little bit more, where you know maybe the answers that he'd give us in the Monday. Uh, big groups. If there was a smaller group talking to us, he'd be a little bit more open and and uh, trusting maybe of those people that were around the sort of small circle of guys who's around or around, you know, on a relatively daily basis. Uh, Lincoln is sort of the same way in both settings. So you can ask him something in Monday and and later in the week, and it doesn't really change. Uh, which there's something to be said for that. Um, but I think overall, like Jason said, I think it's a pretty good relationship yeah. uh, with with each of those guys. So, and, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, no, go ahead. I was just gonna say before we go to Nate, I just uh, do you remember the time when he came in and called me out into the hallway? Yeah, I was just thinking about that when you were in, t- t- um, talking about that in 2013 after OU got just shellacked at Baylor. 
Like it was a, I mean, it was just a, an ass kicking 41 to 12, I think was the final score. And that was when it was between Trevor Knight and Blake Bell. And then you had Charles Thompson calling into radio stations and saying, Kendall should be playing. <laughs> and so it was just like all kinds of stuff was going on. And so that game was on a Thursday night and, uh, and it knocked them out completely of the national championship picture. And my Sunday story was, here's how fall the far the program has fallen so i like had a chart where i put like the first 10 years they had this many all americans the last five they've had this many the blah, blah, blah. so i just did that whole thing and um then in the monday press conference i asked bob just generally to assess the state of the program and he his response was something very short and then after practice he never came into the interviews after practice and we're all sitting in that red room waiting and the door just flies open and he said jason come here and i was like oh boy so i went out in the hallway and he and he he said he goes i just wanted to let you know that um he said in the last, I mean, he had some very arbitrary stat that it's clear he'd either looked up himself or he had had someone look it up for him. And he was like, in the last two years, we've had more Big 12 wins than anyone. It was a very random stat that doesn't really matter. But you can tell he was looking for something. <laughs> and uh, and he goes, so why don't you print that with all your negative stuff? <laughs> and and I, I said, all right, sure. And then he... Um, he started walking away and he goes, do you ask the other coaches you cover this question? And I said, well, I don't really cover any other coaches, Bob. It's pretty much just you. And he goes, well, that sounds like an easy job and walked away. And I like, I was like, oh my God, he's so mad. But you know, I didn't yeah. care. I kind of thought it was funny. It was actually pretty, a pretty good one. Yeah. And then, you know what? The next time I saw him, it was fine. Yeah. Sometimes you just need to get that shit off his chest. I, I get yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry, Nate. No, you're good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nate, uh, it, what was it? It was a uh, difference between Bob, Bob and Lincoln. Sure. I, I, don't or generally we aren't able to get quite as close as y'all are because there's you know four four of us competing different tv stations and then we're not always there because we're coming out osu high school thunder so we're not always able to be there as much so i didn't have quite as close relationship as either one as probably y'all do but i do know junior always had a funny story where i think you were there one of the uh, caravan deals. One of our reporters. Oh, the, it was right after the Joe Mixon. Yeah, oh, I, was I, I, I witnessed it. Yeah. Tried to get him. Like I think as he came out of the bathroom, yeah. bomb. Which you know in news they don't care mm-hmm. if you're you know they get those guys getting handcuffed, walked mm-hmm. in. They, they don't have the rules we have. We you know with with us there's so many rules you play by. Which kind of I'll get to that in a second. Oh, what okay. y'all mentioned. Next question. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, <laughs> so he comes in. He said, "Who who's here with Channel Four? And I went. I just covered up the logo <laughs> on my shirt and just stood there like a statue. He was taped because those guys are done for the rest of the preseason. Well, awesome. And Jason was right there looking you know, at me well, like that was partially my fault too because he came out of the bat. He came Jason out was the rat. Well, what? So here's what he did. Oh boy! He comes out of the bathroom. He gets. Uh, confronted and it was right after the Joe Mixon thing and yeah. I don't I want I think they maybe just announced that he was suspended or I don't remember that was the first yeah. chance I think it was on the crowd literally to ask him about it and that was the only comments we'd be able to get from him right. so that's and why no one ever there. asked so yeah, a new side we person for you showed up and that happened I didn't see it happen but he came into the back into the room where it was and he, he was and he feeling. saw me and he said who is that and I and <laughs> and I just saw her shirt or her microphone and I said it looks like she's with channel four and he's turned around and goes, channel four is not getting anything else and i was like oh man like i felt yeah. really bad but yeah i he just asked yeah. and i was right and he, well he and then he said she she said he told me that right. she had grabbed me coming out of the bathroom or something so <laughs> yeah i felt kind of bad about that but i guess junior fixed it he like had to go meet with him that like saturday and they talk or whatever kind of the same thing he he took the barrage at first and then it calmed down and then he come, this is like the next Monday. He comes in. He goes, he hugged me. Yeah. He got done. He hugged me. We hugged it out. He said, hug it out or something like that. And he was all fired up about that. So he could definitely be have his moments. Um, I think from a TV perspective, it's a little easier dealing with Lincoln because of the link. He'll get, like you said, he'll, he'll kind of expound on answers sometimes. And I don't know how the proper way to put it is, but I think he's a little bit more aware of, his public persona, if that makes sense. I don't think. Oh, Bob, I think there's no doubt about you know, it. I think Bob was the same, right? Regardless. He could, yeah, he's gonna be who he's gonna be. Lincoln, I think, knows people are watching. I need to keep it cool, you know. <laughs> and he cares more. I think. I, th- I think. I think he, he puts stock in it, and value in it. But that's kind of the main, the main thing I notice. And 
Um, it sounds like you're going to get to no, what I'm going to get to yeah, next. Yeah, absolutely, so yeah. You I'll know, let you carry you on. know, I got you. Um, <laughs> well, I, I wanted to say first, this has been great, but uh, the you guys have been a part of some epic press conferences. You mentioned the Mixon deal uh, when he was brought back on the team. Everybody was locked in to that press conference. It was one of the most uh, in, the intense radio things I think I've ever heard. I mean, so con- kudos to you guys on that. And then I also go back to I thought it was always interesting when you guys were, there. There was either football questions or there was life questions. Life questions, Bob shot down. Right? You know, there were there were there were be some where you know he was teaching something like that but most of them it was quick football it would well they were blitzing this guy and da 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 and he'd answer them a lot more to you guys and i really wish he would have done like a little uh took you guys to the did some like film study stuff like kind of like or i do with chalkboard well i think it would have been a great deal but anyway uh he was ta- never gonna do that right yeah. i know i know but i just think it would have been a great great think, deal you sorry, know just JD. Go ahead, uh, sorry jd if you this did? getting off on track but you talk about that i thought you know when i first started covering the first my first experience covering college football in any daily setting was was arkansas back in the the houston nut days in the early 2000s darren mcfadden felix jones uh all those great running backs and we would have sort of a a not completely off the record but a much, much more informal meeting with with houston on the sunday after games and i think that really helped with some understanding of what was going on with that team and what was, uh, you know, why they did things that they, you know, maybe could be questioned from the outside. And we obviously asked those questions. And I I think that as media restrictions have gotten tighter and tighter, heck, that year we had an open locker room. So after uh, after games, you could walk in and talk to anybody except for Peyton Hillis because he was uh, incapable of not telling the 100 percent. A complete truth, yeah, yeah. which sometimes runs counter to what coaches uh, want to happen. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's why yeah. they named the oh, media no, award was, after yeah, fullbacks. It I was mean, it on. was fantastic. Uh, you know, everybody wanted to get and talk to Peyton Hillis. But uh, I, I think as the media restrictions have sort of tightened over the last few years, you lose some of that uh, inside knowledge that you had before because there's not the uh, you know daily relationship. With, with the coaches and you're only seeing them you know two or three times a week in a, in a big group setting and I would and I would just add to that that I, th- I, I that's one thing that I wish fans would understand a little bit more because I think a lot of times and, and look I get it if you're a fan of OU, who cares how the media is treated? Like, mm-hmm. who gives a shit right. if the media is treated badly? Oh, you guys get free yeah. hotels, yeah. free yeah. this, free well, that. And also, yeah. and also, they don't care. Like, to, right. in their mind, it doesn't matter because all they care about is whether the team wins or not, which I understand. But I, I sometimes I wish that fans would maybe understand that if we're better informed, we do a better job of then informing you yeah. about yeah. the team. And, you know, those th- that stuff is all sort of symbiotic. And I, w- and I um, th- that's something that I've, it, Twitter's not a great place to try to explain stuff like that. Yep. But I, you know, that's that's something. But that I, think I think also is, Twitter but, but, is sort of where you can realize that a little bit more. Yeah, that yeah. when you're, you know, interacting with with a beat writer of your favorite program, whether it's a, a college team or a professional team, that you can see the information and the, the payoff of that. Yeah. I, I wish we always talked about this with the Thunder because OU is a thing, <laughs> but the Thunders. I mean, it, they're hiding government secrets in that building, as wow. far as I'm concerned. Um, I just wish we could get down and just give us, like, an hour and a half one day. We could just, hey, J.D., I'm Nate. Um, I'm from blah, blah, blah. I mean, just talk life for, like, five minutes with each of them. Uh, just to where, you know, I'm, I'm not here to bite your head off. Um, and then my other thing on that, too, is I think sometimes people think we want negative things to happen. and <laughs> None of us like things, right? the well, negative and, stuff. And this is what I'm going to say, too. Mm-hmm. Like, we were just in Central Park a couple of months ago for the second straight year. Yeah. When they do cool stuff, we get to do <laughs> cool stuff. And, you know, like... You exactly. Said. And then, you know, you brought up the Joe Mixon thing. You know, when that whole thing broke, I had to mess with that for dang near two years of my life. We both, And, yeah. uh, like, the day that uh, Joe Mixon had his first press conference, was, which was announced, like, gosh, what was it, like an hour and a half before, before it happened, yeah. two yeah. hours yeah. before it happened, yeah. something We're, like funny that. Funny how that deal works out, right? I was supposed to go see Star Wars Rogue One that day, <laughs> had the tickets, and I was like, oh, I'm going to have a good day. It's right, right before Christmas. No you football stuff going on, and bang. Right. Had to sell the tickets. I, I remember, and I'm sorry, J.D., oh, I know yeah, you want to move on, but th- speaking of Joe Mixon, what I remember about that whole saga is, um, that sucked in every conceivable possible way. Like I, I really, really hate that people think that 
would would even think for a second that any of us would have enjoyed that. It, right. it's, yeah, it was it's, a it's it was a funny. terrible situation. Yeah. It was a terrible thing that happened, and it was. I mean, that was the time when you sort of are. It was like in early August, and so you're kind of <laughs> or late July, early August, whatever it was. You're kind of like that's your last <laughs> chance to sort of have a break. Yeah. And instead, I, I remember very clearly there. I had done so much and had to go around and do so much crap and, uh, and and stuff to the point where one day I woke up and it was like I just hit a wall. And I remember our boss, Mike Sherman, which <laughs> if you know him, this is a little bit surprising. He ordered me to take a day off. Like that's the only time that ever happened because I was so spent on that on that crap. So I... Believe me, n- nothing about yeah. that was fun. Like, yeah, it's uncomfortable all the way around. Yeah, just to put it simply. Okay, sorry. No, you're yeah. good. Uh, you guys created a media award. I thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> for, you started out as a little joke, but I got to meet Baker Mayfield through it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Snack Sanchez, Eric Stryker, That's a bunch a of guys. Story, yeah. yeah, that was awesome. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. Does OU get enough access? Before I ask you, or excuse me, do you get enough access to OU? Mm-hmm. Before I ask it, I want the fans to know that I believe that I don't think you all do. And I, I wish there were more that could be done. I'm going to tell more about what the football side explaining would look like. Um, I'm going to ask you, Jason, uh, again, I feel like you should get more. Do you guys get more? What could be done to give you more? What do you think? Oh, boy. Um, Jason and I have had these conversations a few times. I, I, I want to be careful here, too, because I, I think that it's, very, it's much more complicated than either side probably acknowledges on on do do i wish that we got more access of course i wish we got more access um you know i i i wish you know it was easier to uh to have informal moments and sort of get in front of these guys and let them get to know us as people whereas right now the way that it is that's very hard to do for the most part um i think that would ease a lot of the tension between the two sides and i think that it would allow us to do our jobs better um on the other hand i also understand that these are college athletes who their day is completely mapped out they wake up early they do you know they have to they they have all they're busy from sun up to sundown and the last thing that they want to do is come in and, and mess with us and answer our questions and uh that's part of why probably lincoln and 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 the sports information office and all those people um want to keep that stuff restricted and keep it tight and keep it all done at the same time and then that way it can just get over with and, and so i understand that there are two sides to it i of course i wish there was more access but um It's not something when I first started covering OU, it was something that just fucking pissed me off so bad all the time. And I was so mad about it. And then um, but I think as time has gone on, I still get frustrated by these things. And there are still certainly some uh, words exchanged. And, you know, I think Mike Houck probably gets mad at all of us from time to time about he never gets mad at me. I don't know what you're talking about. Mike gets mad at various things. (laughs) And I'm kidding. I think that as as time has gone on, I'm a little bit less, you know, fired up about that. As long as as long as we get chances to do interviews, as long as they're willing to listen when I put in requests for, you know, some one on ones. I was in I'm you know, I'm here right now. The the, uh, two days ago, I I had the opportunity to do a couple of really cool one. Never misses an opportunity for a plug. Yeah. I'm not, I didn't even say what the story was. I didn't even That's say what the stories were. Yeah. But um, no, I was. I, 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 Mike Howe hooked me up with a couple of really cool one-on-ones that I think are going to turn into really good stories. So they, they're, as long as that effort is made, as long as he's willing to listen and take my ideas into consideration, I'm going to be cool about it. I'm going to be cool back. I hope we can talk more about the award because that's, that's, oh, that's, yeah. that's a good story. <laughs> Absolutely. Anyway, sorry. Access, Ryan Aber. Yeah, I, I think I'm uh, in the same boat as Jason in a lot of ways. I think uh, obviously I'd like to have more access. I think the biggest thing is getting to know these guys and especially like one on one opportunities for bigger feature stories, things like that. But like Jason said, Mike Houck has been very accommodating and, and Lincoln has been pretty accommodating on helping those things happen when they can. Um, but I wish there would be more because yeah, I think you know, we're going to get into this more. But I think about the guys that I've had the best relationship with covering. And a lot of them was sort of in that transition from covering high schools to OU. Guys that I had covered a lot in high school and was able to develop a close relationship with. Guys like Gabe Eichert and uh, Jordan Evans. 
uh, Sterling Shepard. S- Sterling Shepard to a little bit lesser degree, although I didn't cover Heritage Hall a ton in I, high school because you yeah. did and, yeah. and Bob Prisbillo yeah. uh, did as well. But uh, I think those are the things that stand out to me. I, I, I would wish they'd be better, but when you look across the country at some of the other uh, policies that other coaches have, it's not that bad here. Um, we still get to talk to assistants, um, certainly coordinators during the year, assistants, especially during the preseason. Um, would like access to them a little bit more because I think those guys are the ones who know their players best and are the best at letting us know, one, what's going on, and two, just what kind of people these, these guys are when we're trying to write like personality-type stories. Uh, but overall, I'm not going to complain too much. We just got to do our jobs in whatever framework that's out there uh, for better or worse. And I also think that that another thing I'll give Mike a lot of credit for is I think that he really does help, try to help us on the if we have a good idea. Like if if you have a really good idea and you you know uh, he, I think that he will he will try to make it happen. Yeah. If you that and what it does actually is it makes us better because it forces us to think outside the box and try to come up yeah. with, with different ideas and and different ways to approach things. And if you do that, a lot of times you will get those one those one. Yeah, I, I think I look back at last year right before the season. I got an opportunity to sit down with Benny Wiley for uh, about an hour. Uh, one day, uh, ask ask Mike how uh, who asked Lincoln, and they made that happen, and was really appreciative of, appreciative of that. And I think that stuff goes a long way. Nate, oh, you access. I've got two things. One, we get like fifteen minutes each fall and spring to shoot video, and a lot of times there's people <laughs> doing toe touches. At least now, under well, yeah, you get since, a since one. Mike Halk, well. Uh, I was going to say, at least now they're in the, in the sun, daylight. Yeah, in the daylight. Because uh, before they were like, yeah, I wasn't going to say that, but you did. Yeah. When they were at like 536 in the morning with no uh, yeah. no light <laughs> at all. It was that. useless for the cameras. I, we took it back and Junior goes, throw that away. We're never using it again. And like that was the end of it. <laughs> and choice words were said after that. That's awesome. But that's my thing is a lot of times we're just looking for ISOs, guys. I mean, like you look at all these pictures in here. Like, of you in action, it's like a tight shot. Are you diving with a ball for the... Sure. Like, we're not showing... We <laughs> On ground level, I can't give you an all-22 view of what the play's looking like, who's blocking who, who's coming from where. We just need ISOs, guys. So if someone talks about the third-string cornerback who's making a rise up the depth chart or whatever, you know it we, is. we got video of him. We can show you, hey, here's this guy. Here's what he's doing. Um, so that's my one thing. And then uh, one-on-ones for, like, TV, they're, like, non-existent. I mean, I, I literally cannot tell you the last time we did any sort of feature with with OU or OSU. Yeah, and and so. it's it's so much different from, um, you know, print or web because you guys can just hold a you know it's it's a conversation. Yeah. With us, you know, we got to get a camera out, and for whatever reason, there's like a like a stigma around that. I think. Yeah. To where you know, like, oh, it's it's this burden for someone to sit down in a chair. And talk to us. Unless it's Soonersports.com. Yeah, well, is. and that's, that one. that's my other part of this. <laughs> I don't want to get anybody in trouble, but we, within the last few years, one of us at K4 pitched a story idea, and that was what came back. Well, we already did that. Well, so it. what? Excuse us. Who, who says anybody's watching your stuff? Yeah, not, not it's, yeah. it's interesting and, to hear. Sorry, Nate. Yeah, it's no, interesting no, no. to hear you talk like that because about these things because it's – it's like the we are in the same field generally, mm-hmm. but we ha- our jobs are so different. You know, mm-hmm. like for me, I don't care if we don't have access to practice. Honestly, I think it sounds boring to go sit out there for it two hours and watch be. boring and to watch practice and and you know going out there for a few minutes and watching whatever. But like for you. You're a visual media. Right. You need, need you need images. You yeah. need Spencer whatever. Spencer Rattler throwing a ball in the throwing yeah. Or and and yeah. so uh, so that and then as far as the one on one thing goes, yeah, I, I could totally understand yeah. that. How, and how it annoys me. I love doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you get to know guys, and um, so that's just annoying to me because I mean, and I've asked for certain things, and it doesn't happen. And I I get it. It is a little different, but to me, like I said, you're sitting down in a chair and talking to somebody for. 
10, 15 minutes, and that's that. Yeah. Yeah. And we get to move on, and that's what annoys me. I like doing that. And to what you said, Ryan, mm-hmm. about doing guys, that's why I, any OU or OSU guy whoops, coming up now, I do something with them before they graduate. Yeah. So yeah. I know them, then OU and OSU fans get to know them, and then I, you know, I know them. Uh, I think it goes all ways, and that way now, if I see – Justin Broyles or Jalen Redman. I could go talk to them. Yeah, any Trace Ford. Any of these guys. Thanks, yeah. So uh, that just annoys me, the the lack of video and the one-on-ones. Because like I said, that's... I, I literally cannot tell you the last time we did anything like that. Well, for for because for us, a one on one is literally like okay, they've done with the scrum, yeah, yeah. and then like let's go out in the hallway. Sure. So yeah. I mean, for us, that or works. let's go over and sit yeah. in a chair and look sure, at Jason's yeah. iPad. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. That was a good <laughs> story. Sure, it, story. It was a good story. Yeah. It was a good it was story. The uh, <laughs> the C D Lamb. I stand by it. Completely. Greatest catch that w- ne- never was story. Yeah, and Jason awesome. sat down with C D because in in the UCLA game he had two one handed catches. Oh, one of one didn't count but it would have been the most amazing catch ever and uh, yeah I so the idea was I sat down with him and I showed him the plays on my iPad I I cut him up and I played him and had him describe what he was seeing and what was going on it was a cool story it it was a good story Jason but you know that I cannot let a chance to (laughs) give you hell pass without doing well and I'll also add like the battling their brand who's to say I can't do, do something eight yeah, times yeah, better. True. I, to quote Russell true. Westbrook in our like our office motto, I do this. You I know, like we all joke, Why like, not? This is what we do. Why not? And right. I, I've seen some stuff, and I'm confident in how I feel about that. I think I, I think that, and, and I made a slightly snide comment about Sooner Sports a minute ago. But yeah, they, they but, do great work. I'm not taking but, anything but from I, but that. I, but I would say that that is a uh, that, it's that, a state media. Yeah, it, it is. It is a. I'm trying to think of the the, the diplomatic way to say they, it. They only allow them at certain it's points. Branded. I mean, it, it's yeah. well, and there Florence. are just certain there there are times when they do stuff that you know they don't let other people do right. whatever. I sort so of get early it. morning workouts, the I, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but at, at the same time, I. I that has always been a little bit annoying to me. Um, well, I, it doesn't annoy me probably as much as it annoys you because you're. Yeah. It's a. It's again a yeah. visual. Well, and like I know. The college TV show, shout out to Eddie Radosovich, we started on, they now have like a deal with them. And I know someone that uh, one of our professors said, they, they've literally never said the words Joe Mixon wow. because of the association. So Interesting. There's, there's some things that are said and <laughs> glossed over. And then, you know, so it's the brand has kept in mind. And again, they do nice work, but this is just from my perspective. Yeah. I'd love to get a crack at it, too. Like I said, I'm feel pretty good about what I can do yeah. just, or Dylan or Brian. Yeah, or, and well, I mean, all of us in the media, I think we do, we all do stories that someone else has done at, at various points, sure. whether it's, you know, we obviously try to do it differently and right. better. Um, but you know, you, you can look all throughout the season at, at stories that, you know, Jason's written that I've later come and followed up on uh, vice versa, things like that. And I think that's just, part of it and yeah. just because sooner sports does it right doesn't make the story yeah. any less valid that's a weak excuse to me yeah yeah well again this guys has been awesome we only got three or four more things uh message board era is what i had written down just because <laughs> you know yeah that, that you laugh y'all know just <laughs> by how bob was depth chart injuries play calls he didn't want any of that i feel bad for you guys not being able to get video and stuff like that you can comment on that um but it just my next thing jason you've worked at arkansas nate you go up to osu a lot talk to me about ou versus other schools you mentioned uh you know just kind of some of the things they do you can talk about how they handle media how they handle practice uh just w- what you think um so my uh, yeah, at, at let's see at Arkansas I was when I covered Arkansas it was still Brett Bielema was still the coach so I, I imagine it's a little bit different now and I'm not around them as much as I used to be but I mean um, it was mostly the same um, there were little differences Brett was a little bit less restrictive about assistant coaches during the season you could sort of get them whenever you wanted um, he would let the media come to practice a lot during the uh, during fall camp um and usually it was like come for 20 minutes and shoot and then leave or sometimes it was come and shoot shoot for 20 minutes but then you can hang out and it doesn't matter yeah. um scrimmages were open nice. um th- that's not the case here that that would be another thing i wish scrimmages this the full scrimmages were, were open i think that would be very informative and, and would help us do our jobs better um i don't expect that to ever happen but <laughs> I, I i think that that would that would be that'd be pretty cool um and, and you know some of the other schools i've been around i mean 
uh, every everybody is just a little different. It's like um, at, at Alabama, Nick Saban does not let even his coordinators talk. It's just him. Um, and it's like the Thunder. That's what the Thunder it's, do. It's just him. Top dog and players. And and, uh, and then they bring in players, and it's I think it's probably hard for the guys down there to get one on ones. At the same time, every practice is open for twenty or thirty mm-hmm. minutes. Every single day, every practice is open for the first twenty or thirty minutes. Um, I. I've said before, and and I this may be uh, this will never happen because again we're very low on the NCAA or Big 12's list of priorities. But I I really think that one thing would, would be great is if there would be some sort of consideration to having blanket media rules across college football or I across like the conference, I like, like that. saying taking some of these decisions out of the coaches' hands, I like. That. like um, like Gary Patterson is very restrictive. You would think TCU would be more open, but Gary Patterson's very yeah, restrictive. Especially in a town you like know, Dallas, you're yeah. fighting the Mavs. Like, right yeah, the- right. But like I, you know, I mean, I know that you just talked about the Thunder, but I mean, generally speaking, there are NBA wide league rules. Oh, yeah. There are as NFL rules. The Major League Baseball has rules, and college sports don't have that. It's completely left up to the whims of the of the head coach. And whether or not he's having a good day sometimes. Uh, <laughs> no doubt. I, yeah, I, I, it's real. not quite as bad here in Norman. Um, but, you know, I do remember there being one week this year where after OU played Army, um, all of a sudden we got much f- fewer defensive players that yeah. next week, <laughs> which caused <laughs> said <laughs> blow up earlier that we were talking about. Um, but, you know, I think uh, Mike Gundy is a lot more reactive and moody about those kinds of things. And I just think if those things would just be, I mean, kind of like they are at the bowl games at the bowl games there are rules and if you don't follow them the school gets fined and i kind of think that it'd be cool if the big 12 or the ncaa would consider that one downside to that potentially would be um some schools that are more open would get less so um but i I think if there were just blanket rules and then if you want to do more you can but you have to have the assistant coaches available you have to if a player's played in a game, he has to be made available um, after the game. If, you know, those sorts of things, I think, would help ease some of the tension that I think exists now between the media and the schools. And I also think that uh, that goes along with the, the mission of college football, which is to teach people. You know, you've got in the NFL, you have media around yep. virtually daily yep. uh, around there in open locker room settings and things like that. I think if you're talking about teaching young players how – to, to succeed at the next level, I think uh, dealing with the media is part of that. I think when you talk about assistant coaches, most assistants want to uh, you know, become coordinators and then become head coaches. Uh, dealing with the media and learning how to, to navigate that I think is important for, for young coaches. And I think being able to, to talk to us and develop that kind of relationship helps uh, in, in that regard. Sorry, sorry Ryan. I, I would just add uh, real quick while I was thinking about it. I never have a problem if someone doesn't want to talk to me. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I I don't want to force anyone to talk to me. A few years ago, remember Samaje P. Ryan never wanted to come in. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it that that would suck if yeah. you know. Like that's why I don't agree that um, that you know. Uh, with, with people that said that Marshawn Lynch, you know, I mean, if he didn't want to talk, if he was only there because he got fine, hey, that's not helpful for anyone. I'll be the first anyone. to say, send Russ the bus. It's, yeah, it's, it's, if it's, I'm not, if you don't want to talk, you're wasting not, my time. It's not, it's not, it's a, it's a complete exactly. waste of time. I think that uh, the rules should basically be that if someone wants to talk and they've played in a game, they should be able to talk. The assistant yeah. coaches should be able to talk. If, if, uh, you know, I don't know, just as a random example, if Dennis Simmons really doesn't want to talk, he shouldn't <laughs> have to come in and talk. But I think he should be given that option yeah. if he wants to. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, I, I kind of like what you said. I had something, but I lost it. I'm, it's my was fault. It OSU? I'm uh, uh, well, if you can, I'd, I'd love to get some of because, uh, you know, you talked about you have that OU versus OSU experience. Sure. So. They're, I'll say this. They're a little... OU's great. I, th- I think Mike does a really good job. Um, oh, I know what I was going to say on, on the you know terms of access and that kind of thing. What made me laugh is we cover OU basketball. They go to the <laughs> final four and everything's open every single yeah. day. You can yeah, get I was away actually with- going to bring that up because I covered basketball for a long time. Yeah, yeah, and you've been there. it was it was incredible. You know, getting to go to every practice, there was yeah. not a second of it that was closed. I think no the, one's mad you're the, there. The first time that any practice ever closes, if they win, um, what they win in the at the uh, 
NCAA tournament in the first round. Right. That practice between the first and second round is closed by NCAA mandate. And it's the I only was, time you can, can't see a long Kruger practice. And I was actually told, I think Ben told me this, or who was um, who was it then that year? Well, it was... Uh, uh, it was, it would have been Hauk, right? No, no, no. no, no uh, Mitch, Mitch Hecker. Mitch, yeah, yeah. Mitch told me... Great guy, that, by the way. That, uh, yeah, that Lon Kruger actually petitioned the NCAA to open it up anyways. Because wow. he wanted their fans to be able to, you know, you're on the road, you're spending good money. So, um, you know, there's different ways to do it. And, you know, I get if I'm Lincoln Riley with as creative as he is or, you know, Mike Gundy and Mike Kirsich and you've got these plays, you're trying to keep them in. But we're not there to, like, expose your secrets to the world. You know, we're just yeah, I, I trying to do our job. Sort of goes along with trust that yeah. if they trust the media that's around then they can yeah. feel more. Uh, open to do those things, but without that relationship, that trust doesn't really get built. Um, but as, uh, going back to what you said about OSU, they're, they're great. I, I always enjoy going up there. <laughs> and it's nice if, like I cover OU Army, um, it's nice every now and then to go to, up to OSU after that, that next week yeah. where I'm like, ah, I'm going to dodge that bullet. I don't want to mess with that for a week. <laughs> um, but OSU is great. They always treat us well. They always thank us for coming where you may not necessarily get here because uh, or in Norman. Um, because the, the demand, I would say, is a little bit higher and a little bit different just because of uh, the past. But I always enjoy going to OSU. The only really bad flare up was the Gundy thing this last fall, and I wasn't even there for that. Dylan was. <laughs> um, so I didn't really get any firsthand experience in it. I was there that Saturday at the press conference, and I thought he was – kind of lame how he handled it a little bit because he acted like oh shucks you know you could have you could have asked and like from everything dylan told me that wasn't the case right and uh yeah. phone calls were made between our station and osu and uh so it was a serious deal but i mean they're, they're about the same for the most part i'd say um uh gundy can definitely is, is a different dude and definitely a little bit <laughs> more up and down and all over but he's always treated me well um so i don't really have too many complaints their their new thing doesn't what annoys me now is um i wish they just moved their their in-season availability uh, as far as a weekly press conference just a tuesday but you know i know football people are creatures of habit sure. so gundy just talks monday and the ncaa has a rule now i think where you have to have a day of the week off well osu is different because they practice on sunday everybody else in america is off sunday so then you know they get that day off we're not talking to them anyways so that day got moved to Monday uh, as their off day when Gundy's talking. So now we have to go Tuesday after practice to talk. And I know last year, one of the first times we had to do it, which is annoying for us, to have to go twice in a week, which, you know, y'all you do it every day. So <laughs> props to you. But um, I I think I'd ask Mike Yersich something after the game. I don't know. i got to look at the film, which, which is always the go-to <laughs> if they don't want to talk about something. So I go Tuesday. Hey, blah, blah, blah. You know, what happened or, you know, how are you going to try to build on that this week? This is Tuesday. We're moving on. We're not going to talk about that. I'm like, well, when are you going to talk about it? <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Where's that's the logic awesome. here? That's it. Which that's I watch just, Yeah. Uh, so that's, uh, that, that's I, I'm not going to go back to that yeah. subject. Yeah. yeah. I, nope. I just wish they'd move it to a day. I mean, that's my only complaint with OSU. I said they're great. I literally called a guy one time. I think when Clint Shelp was there talking for a spring when he was the starter, but wasn't the starter like a week right, later, right. they literally held him there for like. 15 minutes while I was late. So just so I could talk to him. So uh, I enjoy them. Uh, Thunder's by far the worst of all of them. So I won't even get into them. Got to get better. Thunder. Yeah. We'll do with this. It's been great. Uh, favorite OU game, Jay, and then give me a BBJ story. Oh, man. Okay. Um, favorite OU game. Man, I've, there's been some great ones right. that, I've, that I've covered uh, through the years. Um, I... I I, I would have to say probably my favorite game that I've covered, um, and, and I know that I'm going to leave here tonight and be like, damn, no, I wanted to say this one. But I'm going to say the 2012 game in, in, in Morgantown at West Virginia <laughs> when uh, OU won 50-49. to 49, Tavon Austin <laughs> had like 600 all-purpose yards. Uh, he'd never played running back before, and they just threw him back there, and it freaked everyone out. And uh, Mike Stoops <laughs> was so me. like like – Frazzled that he ran um, a a a, uh, three eight, a three three one seven. It was three. We put Julian Wilson in linebacker and yeah, ran seventy. Yeah, yeah. I said three one seven. So really, it was a a, a, a three zero eight because um, Julian, Julian Wilson, Wilson was, was a defensive a, back, yeah. and uh, and it was just a disaster for that for that side of the ball. But it was such an exciting game. Um, it was very stressful to write that on deadline. But I, I have said forever that, ta that, that that game, Tavon Austin, is the single greatest 
performance by one player I've ever seen, maybe ever will see, and uh, it was so much fun to watch. I was convinced. I made a bet with one of my friends after that game. I said Tavon Austin was going to be a pro bowler within one year, within one or two years, because I just knew. I was just convinced that Tavon Austin, I lost that bet. I lost that bet hard. It looked um, but I, I was like, based on one game, he was like, you're basing on one game? I was like, yes, he is going to be a pro right. bowler. Right. He was and he right. wasn't. Um, so I, I'll go with that. That was a very, very fun game. Um, uh, BBJ story, man. Um, he he was so, gosh, they're, they're, I'm, I'm trying to decide between a couple of them because um, I, I, I'll... T- <laughs> um, there's a lot you can't repeat. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I've got a bunch myself, but the well, the, the, yeah, well, the, Nate, the Nate has the, like the pre Cotton Bowl you know, party forty for um, every half of one week. I don't think so. you were there. The pre <laughs> Dylan was the, yeah. the, the Dylan was the night before the Cotton <laughs> Bowl. Kelly the Kelly, Clark- the, Clark- oh, the, yes, the Kelly Clarkson concert. <laughs> the Cotton Bowl. Let's see how much Kelly- of the story Jason really tells. No, no, no. I'm not going to tell the whole thing um, because I I, I, I want to keep it about BBJ. I just know he was there for that and part of the the festivities. How do you remember this, Jason? I remember it quite well, um, and uh, but you know I I just I mean I I just love the man. He yeah. was just you know I I don't. He was so kind. He was so um, nice to me. He he treated me with respect, even when I was young and new around uh, the OU beat. Um, I never felt. I mean, I was certainly intimidated the first time I met him, probably because he's Bob Berry sure. Jr. Um, you know, I, I I guess my story. Was just, I just remember when I was in high school playing at Noble High School. My junior year of high school, we had our best season, maybe the best season Noble's ever had. Not that I had anything to do with it. <laughs> I, so I was, the Miami recruit didn't have anything to do with it. Whatever. I I was I was uh, I did not have anything to do with it. We don't it. need to tell that was story. I am or something like that. No, it was it was the U. Okay. Jason got a letter. Okay. And everything. Hey. It's just because. <laughs> It's just because when I was a freshman, let's just get this over with. When I was a freshman in high school, I went online and filled out a recruiting Perfect. questionnaire on yes, Miami's website. They, you. they sent a letter to Noble High School. So I was this terrible freshman football player, and they brought it to class. And so, like, everyone was freaked <gasps> out. But it was only because I'd filled out the thing. And I know that it exists somewhere in my parents' house. Oh, I, can, dude, I still haven't been able to find it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway... Anyway, uh, when I was a junior, I didn't play much, but uh, I remember we were having a great season. We were ranked really high. We won the district that year. And when we played, maybe it was Carl Albert, um, uh, or I can't remember exactly. I just remember that when Bob Berry Jr.'s helicopter landed on the noble practice field. <laughs> Elvis. In the yeah, and he and you know I was we were in the game. I didn't know that he that the helicopter had landed. All I know is everyone in the stand started freaking out, um, and then we saw him walk down the sideline, and it was the biggest damn deal. We had made it as a high school oh, football absolutely. program because Bob Berry Jr. flew his helicopter down to Noble to spend a few minutes at our game. I, so I mean that that's what I would say. That is the thing I probably remember the most, even despite later having a personal relationship with him. But the night he died, I'm I'm sure it was worse for you, but it was. I was devastated when that happened. Absolutely. So anyway, yeah. on, on the helicopter note, on a more positive note, he once I I can't remember the town's name did that. Showed up, someone took a picture of him. He made their Monday morning paper just by being yeah. there. Like, oh yeah. When the media is the news, that's <laughs> your big deal. I'm sure it was like that everywhere. Yeah, yeah. He, he was up. at those small towns. Yeah. That was I mean, I can't think of a bigger deal for a, a high school like Noble to have Bob Berry Jr. show up at your game, yeah. fly there in too. his helicopter. Oh yeah, he oh, loved man. it. Holy crap, yeah. man. Right, yeah. favorite game BBJ. I'll actually start off with the BBJ story since we're talking about that a little bit. Um Probably the one I remember most outside of just growing up watching him. I mean, him and his dad, um, you know, I talked about reading growing up, reading Barry Trammell and, and John Rohde and those guys at the Oklahoman. Uh, I also grew up watching Channel 4 and BBJ and, and Bob Barry Sr. and doing what they do. And that was also a big part of, you know, me wanting to do this. My first thought was wanting to do TV stuff. And I quickly realized I was much better at writing. Also, than, you don't uh, have me. the face for yeah, it. that oh, too. Wow. <laughs> Got more of the face of it for you. At least, at least I got hair. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Come on, you can't burn. toss that up there. And, oh, I mean, you opened the door to it. 
if you just wouldn't have said it, I wouldn't have. <laughs> you, carry on, carry on. But you hit it any, anyway, uh, as far as personally, the one that stands out was probably the last time I got to spend any significant time around him before he died. It was at the Big 12 uh, basketball tournament in Kansas City. We talked about open practices and things like that. They have an open practice uh, there at the Sprint Center, and I just sat down and wound up talking to BBJ for, gosh, probably 40 minutes. Uh, just just chatting back and forth about what's going on in our lives, uh, you know, going covering this that team that year um, and, and everything like that. And I think that that's something that I'll always remember is uh, just being able to spend that time with him, with a guy that just, I mean, he's up there uh, for me as far as somebody in sports media. You know, BBJ and Barry uh, Trammell are the two yeah, guys that absolutely. just uh, are incredible. And both of them are, were are and were first class people and uh glad to count them as friends um as far as favorite game i go back you know i covered ou back in uh the 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 first years of bob stoops uh not daily that was you know just coming in for games things like that i was on the uh covering muskogee for muskogee pretty much writing about seth luttrell and scott kempenick uh (laughs) every week uh, Seth Luttrell, of course, from Muskogee. Scott Kempenick from Wagner. And, Fullback. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I would, ties uh, back yeah, together. I, I, <laughs> I knew that would make J.D. Yes, proud. Sir. But, uh, and he's doing all right for himself right about mm-hmm. now. Uh, but I think the uh, that 2000 National Championship season, the Nebraska game, really stands out. for that's, I think that's, even though they beat K-State the week before, that was the, oh, my gosh, this team really has a chance yeah, to do no this uh, moment. And it was crazy. And another BBJ tie into that, uh, the police protected the goalposts that, after that yes, game with this. pepper spray. <laughs> and I remember BBJ walking into the interview room, and his eyes were watering <laughs> Him and Mark from, <laughs> uh, from the pepper spray. Uh, and uh, so that was a, a rough post game for him. Uh, but, but that was a really cool game. And then the, the Superman game uh, with uh, yeah. Teddy Lehman and, and Roy Williams really stands out as far as this latest stint covering probably that Tennessee game in 2015. Oh, that was amazing. Um, that was a great the, one the atmosphere at, at the, in the overtimes, Jason and I were standing in the end zone for that. Oh. The, the checkered stadium, the, you know, hundred thousand plus people just roaring. And then to see the, you know, that's sort of the first realization of one, what Lincoln Riley was yep. and two, what Baker Mayfield oh, no. was. <clears throat> and uh, especially looking back at that game, it's just uh, really eye popping. Yep. Baker Ma- single handedly. Oh, but- won them that oh, game. That was, amazing. Oh, yeah. that was an amazing performance. But yeah, Nate finishes off. Nobody was closer to BBJ and then favorite OU game. Um, I'll do favorite OU game first. Um, I went at Tennessee, but I've heard the same things. I have a friend that still says the 2000 Nebraska game is the best he's ever been to. Yeah, it's, and it's hard to argue. Yeah, and we, we pull out the video of that, and it's like, it's it's such a foreign concept of, oh, you storming the field. Yeah. I mean, think about it. it yeah. They've had chances to maybe here and there, but it's like, they're too good for that, you know. No one's yeah. gonna do but it. But at that time, yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah, exactly. Like you said I mean, that was people their... were throwing parades that they were in the the Independence Bowl the year before. Right. Yeah, but uh, I wasn't at Tennessee. But I think Ohio State's probably my favorite. Mm-hmm. And a friend good. and I were just texting about this because I think it was on TV the other night. And just growing up a college football fan, like I remember just standing there. Uh, junior used to always say this to a junior. Like a lot of times we'll do high school football and then like the the, the, re, the when this came up, we did high school, um, like playoffs, I think, drove to Fort Worth at like one in the morning, get there, at, um, you know, whatever that is, 3.34. And then, you know, it's 11 a.m. kick. So you're up like three or four hours later to get out of the stadium and I'm moaning and growing. He's like, this is what we do. This is why we do it for games like this, you know, <laughs> yes, just laying yes, into being like, yes. okay, you're right. And yeah. I remember thinking that like, this is why I, chose to do this and i'm feel lucky that i do this and you know getting to to be in in um in columbus watching the dot in the eye i mean like i had goosebumps it was just awesome to see and then uh just a great game their fans are into it and uh the cool part like eddie and i and i can't remember who else was there shooting but like in the fourth quarter we were on the end where kind of ou's fans were so like as everybody figured out like holy crap they're gonna win this game like it was cool to kind of experience that because they're going nuts we're getting great video of it and so it was just an, an awesome game to be there be a part of um uh, it's something I won't forget anytime soon. Just to say I was in the horseshoe. You see it 
all the time on TV. I just saw Charles Woodson and them playing there mm -hmm. on TV earlier. But just to be there and experience all that tradition, OU's kind of got the, you know, similar style and all that. But it, it was just awesome to be there and um, kind of how you mentioned getting to witness Baker be Baker, yeah. watch greatness out there. Yeah, and, and those those stadiums are always really cool. It's cool yeah. to go to the big time college football atmospheres like right. Tennessee, like Ohio State. Notre Dame was another one that yeah. Uh, sure. yeah. Jason and I both went to that. Yeah, it was, was just uh, absolutely incredible. And it's it's right. fun. And I, I think that's a good thing about what OU does scheduling wise. Absolutely. Yeah. Is he, as a writer, you get opportunities to go. I know it's great for players to get chances uh, to, to go to some of those places too. Yeah. Well, and then you, you look back when they're playing in Lawrence in November and there's more <laughs> OU people in Kansas there. It's like, uh, you better cherish it because mm -hmm. there's so many of those other games that, uh, but it's just cool. Like you, like y'all said, just getting to be around there and experience. It's awesome. My favorite junior story, probably he was notorious about showing up late to work. We have a five o'clock. My man would walk in the back door at four forty five and like he'd have like bring in a, a, a like trash bag full of hats he's getting rid of. And he'd be on there going, All right, free hats for anybody that wants that and we're you know, there's nothing in the show for us to edit, <laughs> nothing in at all. And he's, you know, you know, off doing that and it's like, dude, let's go. And I worked for him part time in college. Uh, knew how to edit good enough, and I remember just being like, "Holy crap! How much? This is on me to get this done." Which now I can do it in my sleep, but right. then it was terrifying. Right. Knowing my man walks in at four forty-five, we are on at five fifteen, and he's going to spend ten to fifteen minutes doing God knows what, you know, internet shopping or watching some game or on the phone. Um, so, anyways, it's he and I one night. On a weekend. I'm not sure why he was working that weekend, but it's late. The Stanley Cup's on, I think. And he's like, I want this. Um, I want the final goal. Let's show the final goal. It's great video or whatever. So we have one TV that's always kept on us around showtime. Because we're a lot of people don't know this. A lot of times we're working right up to the last second. We sure. definitely were with him. Yeah. I mean, there'd be times like he'd be on and like he'd be talking about something leading into a video. It's going in as he's talking. Oh he God. moves on to the next one. It's going in as he's talking. And where it's like wow. you are beating up by seconds. And yeah. people used to think we're psychotic. Because, uh, you know, we're back there not sweating it. And he's, you know, um, going, hey, look at that Mike Gundy call me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he'd do that all the time. Like, let's go, dude. Yeah. And every now and then he'd panic and do these things where you'd really freak. But that night he won the last goal. And we kept, like I said, we always kept one TV on us so you knew where you were in the show. Well, I rewinded to get the goal. I get busy, go to go pull the goal. No one puts it back to like the current time. So we're like three or four minutes behind. And Junior was, like I said, famous for even getting out there late. And his thing, he always told us, Dylan and I still live by it, Brian, never run to the set. Because um, if you run out there, you're going to be going, hey, Bob Stoops, <laughs> but out there, you know, and you're going to be out of breath. So he'd stroll out there, you know, doing his thing. And um, so people were accustomed to him, accustomed to him, like running up the last second, being light, doing his thing, being a champ. That was him. Um, so we're getting there, and all at once, 30 seconds, you know, my man George comes yelling back for us and we're like, oh my, oh my God, what? Because we're back there. I think he was like, he was great about this. Like you just said, just being a good guy. He'd give us free crap he'd get or buy us dinner. Or, you know, here, Bob Jr. loves oh, you. Yeah. Take this shirt. You know, I, I don't want it. And, you know, that kind of thing. He'd get free, all kinds of cool free stuff. I think that's what he was doing. Know you know, I love you, right? Here, here's a hat. Here's yeah. a shirt. And we get this 30 second call. I'm like, oh my gosh. I go in the other room, grab his jacket. Like, get that on. Get out there. Go. And he's like, we're not going to make it. And someone's like, oh my gosh. And it's like 1115. We're on like an hour after we should be he gets out there we're in black which is the ultimate tv no-no um he gets done our news director or no it was one of our producers was ticked junior you're the only guy i know it could be late an hour after we're already supposed to be on and then i'm like so what happened he goes oh i blamed it on you wow. <laughs> nice. that's junior so that, it was yeah. all your fault i'm yeah, like really awesome. dude yeah. really uh, um, and there, there's so many more like that where it's like, dude, he was just the greatest guy ever. Um, and just, he was like Ferris Bueller, you yeah. know, I mean, he could do whatever he wanted and he knew he could, but he didn't always necessarily do those things. Uh, but I always say people knew him like you guys did. Um, 
say they know him, you know, or like you don't always get, the, oh, hey, Junior. I'm like, we'd be at a game, like, who's that? Oh, I have no idea. Right. You know, but he was him. He was cool. And yeah, absolutely. Uh, Oklahoma to its core. And then there's people that wanted to know him. There was never, you just didn't know him around <laughs> Oklahoma City. So. Awesome. Well, I, I just, before we stop, I feel like we have to talk about the media award. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you have yeah. I, I, Just because we're here yeah, and this is the subject of the thing, <laughs> I, I just, uh, you know, with that, that came about because we were, I, I was at uh, the Russell Athletic Bowl and, uh, you know, that was just a miserable experience. Walmart Sweatpants Bowl. Bowl. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, the wall, it's, it really should have been called the Walmart Sweatpants Bowl. And uh, we, I saw a tweet that Missouri's writers, I think, had given a, an award to the guy who was the best to deal with, the most cooperative to deal with or something. And I, and I just thought, like, that's, that's a great idea. Like, you know, because I, I think it's important, you know, as, as, you know, we spend a little bit of time here, com, you know, a little bit of complaining about access or about this or that or whatever. But at the end of the day, we all love our jobs. We Absolutely. all are very appreciative of the people that are willing to come in and talk to us. Um, and especially if you, you know, if the, the ones who really seem to love it, um, you know, Zach Sanchez, Eric Stryker, Barry Mayfield, and then recently Curtis Bolton are the ones who have won this award. And um, and so we, yeah, so those of us, and I think we did like a group chat of, all right, let's do it. We should name it after someone. Who should we name it after? And it really didn't take that long to come up with JD That's because, awesome, awesome. And, and the thing, very few of us actually covered you when you played. Because wow. you're an old, because you're an old man now. I am old. Um, Carrie got the way to prove it. Maybe uh, Carrie. As far as the B writers, yeah, Carrie's yeah. probably the only one. Maybe yeah. John Shin. Yeah. Maybe yeah. at the time. I remember talking people. to you on camp. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but. Um, but, you know, it's just that we all feel like if we need a voice in our story or in our broadcast about OU football from the perspective of a former player, we know that we can call this guy oh, yeah. and he will answer the phone. And he'll, if, he, if he's not in the middle of something, he will talk to us and give us great stuff. And um, so it was like it's very easy to decide to name it after you. So, um you know, I, I think people I want people to know that like that really means a lot to us right. when we have guys, yeah, experts like that, that we can get when we need them. So anyway, yeah, I think that it always helps to have those guys. And every year it seems like there's, you know, one or two guys that develop. I think, uh, you know, certainly Zach Sanchez really uh, came on strong as far as dealing with the media. His uh, junior season, right? Because his senior season is when Eric Stryker won it. Yeah. Stryker was a guy who was the worst person to deal with. Uh, it his, was interrogating first, a hostile witness. Yeah. The yeah. first, his first it was time just he came in. Awful. And then all of a sudden, a, a switch flipped for him, and he was the greatest, especially talking about non football stuff. I mean, it was, it was sort of became non-football. Tuesdays with Eric Stryker. I think the, the most memorable one that I can remember is uh, in that uh, the temporary. Uh, team meeting mm-hmm. room, yep. uh, where he would he talked about a, a paper that he had written about I think FDR. It, yeah, and it was just <laughs> fantastic he stuff. Yeah, he literally walked in, walked in front of the media, and goes, "All right, guys, I know you got your questions, but before I want to talk to you guys about this paper I'm writing about FDR." And he just would like talk about it for like five minutes, and it was it was that's great, awesome. you know. But so. and I think that that stuff, and this is going back to you know eight conversations ago, but that that stuff helps us. Yep. know these people in a different way and, and know them more as people rather than just football players and I think that's important well yeah. oh, go ahead uh, I was just going to say that's that's all we're really looking people think we're like like I said out to get people we're just looking for perspective we're not out there we can't do what they do um, I'm always very careful not to criticize in that way especially individually because I can't go yeah. cover a pun <laughs> no or score doubt. a touchdown no. on LSU well and you guys um, do a great job of covering my kids too so I thank yeah. Jamie Nance Marcus yeah. Major Will Sunderland Roy Williams back in the day so. But, um, yeah, I just, like you said, you're just looking for perspective. I, I, I still like Zanch- Zach Sanchez. I saw him in a game a year or two ago, and I told him, I'm like, dude, I, thank you so much. You, you speak your mind. You don't care what anybody thinks. You just say it. And, like, that's it, it, it's a very rare quality in today's world, I feel like, where you're that confident in what you say and you believe you don't care what anybody and, thinks. And Zach got it, too, because there was I, – I know that we're probably running no, way did, over you your did. time here. But there was one time when Zach – got mad at me because uh, he it was after they'd gotten beat here by Baylor and I tweeted one of his quotes he said something about the fans and uh, it you know people started responding and tagging him in it and stuff and then he tweeted back at me and said 
Jason Kersey did not give you the full quote. This is what I actually said, yeah. and blah blah blah. And and uh, so he was clearly probably mad because the game, mad because he got thought he got taken out of context. Well, they whatever. That, game. Yeah, they that was and, the rarest and, thing and, ever. Uh, and the next. Monday or Tuesday or whenever that he came in, I waited him out and I followed him out and I just said, "Hey, are we cool?" And he was like, "Yeah, yeah, we're cool." Yeah. Like he, you know, yeah. it was just like yeah. th- those those disagreements are going to happen sometimes. Yeah. It's the guys who can get over it and understand we're all just here no doing our job, whatever. And anyway, so thank you yeah. for that. And I, I'm what these guys said about you too. I oh, thank, thank you so you. much you, for you've helped me with countless stories, uh, especially with the the high school thing. Like we were saying, you don't always get the access with you. I can talk to just about anybody thank if you get a connection and uh, my thing with you I've always um, appreciated is you're always looking out for whoever the subject is you could care less <laughs> not that I mean no, in a bad yeah, way yeah, no you could care less about yeah. you and I think that's yeah. cool that you know in this world especially today you see these trainers and these people that kind of prey on these kids that's uh, that's not you you're yeah, just looking you. for their best interest um, whether you don't care what school they go to and you're always yeah. cool helping with us and uh, I think that's why we're all here that's right now yeah, where right. it goes yeah. both ways no so, doubt about I mean, it I, I mean just, heck yeah. I remember JD bailed me out one time I had a we used to do a, a Sunday feature every day, every Sunday, collected wisdom. And we have to call, yep. talk to a subject for, for 20 or 30 minutes and uh, just make it in their own words thing. It's a pretty easy thing to write, but the, the conversations are pretty bulky. And I can't remember what happened. One of them fell through. Uh, hadn't done JD. I couldn't believe that we hadn't done JD. <laughs> I was at a basketball game in Waco, Texas, getting ready to walk into the arena, the Farrell Center down there, and call JD and talk to him for... Uh, probably 20, 30 minutes and had a great conversation and uh, really helped me out. Hadn't been the only time, but that's the one that stands out in that's my awesome. mind. That's awesome. And then I got to give you guys a shout out too, man. When the SAE deal happened, this will tie in BBJ. I mean, Jace, me and Jason did a podcast over it. So for him to be able to think think of me and be able to talk about race. And um, I actually sent out a tweet and I said, you know, not all SAE are racist and the, the sororities damn sure weren't racist back when I was in school. So, <laughs> you know, so I, re- I remember that tweet. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. 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 And BBJ sent me a message because well, I believe he was an SAE. He, just he, said, was, thank he, you was. he was. For that. that was like their so. national voice yeah. at a certain so he point. He just said thank you, and I, I've always kept it. So it was yeah. hilarious. So. <laughs> What a way. But guys, this has been great. We'll have to do a part two. You guys will just we'll set it up. Yeah. My guy Brad Reed will kill this. So Jason Kersey, Ryan Aber, Nate Fakin, thank you guys so much. Been another great episode of Fullback You. 